Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Billy Keels, the host of the Going Long Podcast. Freedom. Every week I'm going to be here interviewing the absolute best in the business as it relates to real asset investing, as well as real Main Street investors. We're going to be having conversations where you can listen in and that's going to help you to continue on your path to education so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident in investing long distance. So make sure that you, uh, that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you're liking it as well because that way you can get every single episode as soon as it comes out. And by the way, don't forget to leave today's episode a five-star review. Let's go ahead and listen to today's conversation. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. I'm your host, Billy Keels, and today we have a very special show for you. If you've ever wanted to figure out how you can get out of your own way so that you can allow your heart and your mind to connect and really start to make an impact uh, through investing, you're really going to love today's show. Uh, we have an absolute wonderful person uh, who's joining us all the way from Belize. He's going to talk to us about how he's been able to do exactly that. Um, not only is it someone that uh, has been out and been able to make this impact, someone that I've known for quite a while, and I'd like to welcome him to the show now, Mr. David Kafka. David, thanks so much uh, for taking the time to join us, man. Hey, Billy. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. This is such a pleasure for me uh, to actually have you on the show. Uh, we've had a chance to, to know one another for quite a while, shared some really good stories. Um, I love your story. I, I want you to be able to, to talk about it, but just a couple of things that I want to highlight before we jump into it. I mean, originally being uh, from South Carolina, I know you've done some things as a firefighter. Uh, you've also have a, a training as an engineer. And also you started your own company from a landscaping perspective. You had a desire to really find out more uh, what was out there beyond uh, South Carolina. So you've, it took you to where you are today. And I'll let you tell us uh, exactly where once again. Um, and I know that that happened, I guess, probably a little bit, almost around 15 years ago or so. Uh, since then, not only are you a broker owner, uh, there in Belize. I guess I gave it away. Uh, you're also a best-selling author, uh, an investor, and you also have uh, passion projects that will that have you as board members in, in areas like the Humane Society and things like that. So um, I don't want to take everything away, but like I said, everyone, you're going to really love today's uh, episode. If you're watching it, if you're listening it, listening to it, and uh, David, you know what? Just a couple things. One last time, I'll let you let, let you go, but. Um, and let you start talking, but there's a lot of times that we get to a certain point in life. There's, it's based on the number of actions that we've taken. Uh, you've definitely taken a lot of actions to get to this point in your life. So if you could maybe give us a little bit better idea and understanding of who is David Kafka and what have you done to get to this point in life, man? Yeah. So uh, thanks again, Billy, for having me. It's good to see you virtually. I miss being with you, uh, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, having some drinks together, but uh, um, we have to do what we have to do, you yep. know. Um, I've been, uh, I've been in, I came to Belize about 15 years ago, um, just wanting to get away for vacation of some sort, you know, and maybe look for investing, you know, outside of, of South Carolina. And uh, I got to Belize. I, I mainly picked Belize because it was English speaking. And uh, it was, you know, some other reasons too, you know, but uh, we enjoyed the Caribbean. We enjoyed going on cruises, but didn't like how they told you you have to be on the boat at a certain time and things like that. So we wanted to just go to one place, experience the, you know, everything, the culture, the food, all that. And uh, so uh, we picked Belize and uh, never looked back. And uh, once I got off the plane, it was just, I knew I was home, you know, so uh, went back to South Carolina, Charleston, and put everything on the market for sale, and uh, here I am. Wow, man, a number of things to uh, to be able to unpack there. So you not only recognized the, the opportunity, you had something that you felt like you wanted to do, that you wanted to be able to invest, uh, like I like to talk about, invest beyond your backyard, right, while you were in South Carolina. You had some clear criteria, some of them that you shared with us just now, I know English speaking, so that was an important criteria uh, for you as you started to look at where you wanted to, uh, to, to, to invest. And also, you wanted to go places where culture and you, you knew that there was a specific location 
or at least a general location that uh, that was interesting for you. Maybe if you could talk to us a little bit about, you know, the the, the language aspect and also location wise, how, I guess, w- what are some of the drivers for, for those as some of your criteria? Yeah, so what I, um, I was gonna sell everything and I was gonna retire. So I didn't have to work anymore. But this was 2010, right? So we all know what happened in 2010 and I was just so finished, done. I was just selling stuff, 20, 30 cents on the dollar just to get out and change my life. Um, I was, you know, had a lot of debt and, you know, do dads like Robert Kiyosaki says. And, and so I, got to Belize and we went to Placencia at first and I just, I really liked it and I liked Belize, but I wasn't sure I was going to stay in Placencia. Right. So I liked Belize because it was English speaking and it was a Caribbean. And once I got there, I fell in love with the people. So because my landscape company was, you know, fairly large, I had managers running it. We stayed for a month and that month kind of flew by. And while I was there, I noticed the real estate market was, wow, it was doing pretty good. And I bought lots before, um, buildable lots and sold them. I bought, you know, houses, flipped them, you know, stayed in them, fixed them up, you know, but I wasn't really a true investor, I wouldn't say. Um, And... I noticed there was a lot of crooked real estate agents. And so I'm like, if crooked real estate agents were making some money, I could definitely make some money being honest and just do deliver what I say I'm going to deliver. And so when I left that first trip 15, 16 years ago, I knew that's what I was going to do. So I went home, researched, and then we came back six months later. And this time we stayed for a month, but we stayed two weeks in Placencia, and then we went two weeks to San Pedro. Um, My daughter was, well, when when we moved, she was 11. So now she was probably, you know, seven, eight, you know, nine, something like that. And so I had them to consider, right? I didn't want to be, I could live somewhere in the jungle and, and be fine, but my wife and my daughter couldn't. Um, so a lot of what I was thinking wasn't just what I wanted. It was what was best for the family. And so we stayed those, that month, two weeks in Placencia, two weeks in San Pedro. And I learned some more, went back, researched some more, came back, uh, six months later. And we did this for, you know, three, four years until we finally decided we wanted to stay in Placencia. I thought San Pedro, which is where my daughter wanted to live, Hamburgers Key, which is the number one tourist destination in Belize now, um, I thought it had peaked. So boy, was I wrong on that one. But I wanted to go to the next place, which would be Placencia, a small beach community, things like that. And uh, so that's where I am. You know, I've, I've been in Placencia. We moved in 2010. February 2010, so I just had my 10th uh, anniversary in Belize. Congratulations. Um, uh, Thank you, thank you. I became a Belize citizen in 2019, Um, so I'm very happy about that. And uh, wasn't easy. Um, You know, it. uh, like I said, I thought I was coming to retire, and I actually moved to Belize with like uh, $12,000 with three of us. So... um, it was a whole new start. Um, so that's my story. I could get more into it, you know. You, you know, there's, I mean, there's so many, there, there's a number of things I'd like to just focus on. I mean, because what started was number one, the, the curiosity, then you saw an opportunity. Uh, as you mentioned, there were things that were happening in the real estate market. So that drew your attention. You also saw that people that were not necessarily operating with the, with the best intentions were doing things and were being able to be profitable. So you recognize, Hey, listen, the opportunity is there. And what about being able to do it in a way that is 
that is done in a in a forthright, transparent way. And then from there, it's the the, the it was an iterative process. So you really went took time to learn about the market, to go back and forth, decide which made sense for you. Um, and then ultimately it led you to, to where you are today. And I think when, when we think of a lot of the, uh, the going long uh, viewers and listeners, this is something that can happen pretty frequently, right? We, we, we live in one place and we're interested in, in investing uh, potentially in a place that's not in our own backyard. And so through that, this iterative process, maybe talk us through some of the things that you were learning that helped you ultimately make the decision that you wanted to be in one place versus the other once you knew that Belize was the right place for you. Um, it's really just personal preference. Um, you know, I got a lot of clients from all over the world, Europe, um, mainly the U.S. and Canada. and if I bet money, they would pick Placencia or they would pick San Pedro, I'd lose every time because once they experience it, it's something they know once they're there. Um, for me, I wanted something a little more laid back. I didn't want to be in a, I don't know if this is politically correct, but a Cancun type area, you know, where it's just hustle and bustle. I wanted to experience true Caribbean life. And um, so you have to experience it. So now I'm trying, you know, to collapse tr time frames for people. You know, I'm trying to, I've done my 10,000 hours in Belize. I'm trying to help them hone down, you know, okay, you don't need to spend time here or there, but you need to spend time in two or three places, you know, and that way I can help educate them on where they should focus. Um, so it's, it's really just a, you know, like I said, a personal preference on what you want. Do you want the ocean? Do you want the mountains? Do you want more of a laid back lifestyle? Do you want more of a nightlife lifestyle? You know, things like that is, is kind of what it's going to boil down to. When it comes to, you know, people in your audience, once they come here, they're going to see there's a problem and they have a solution, you know, so there's nothing here or, you know, like I was in landscaping. I knew in, in Belize landscapers, I wasn't going to make a living in landscaping. So I had to think outside the box, you know, so your listeners are going to see something and they're going to know, Hey, I could do this better, you know, or wow, I could invest in this and make this kind of return and not live here, or I can manage it and live here and make even this amount of return. So it's, it's just, it's just mainly personal preference. You know, now I live between San Pedro and Placencia. So I travel back and forth. Um, and it, as long as you have a good team, you know, you can, you can live wherever you want to live. You can live in Spain, you can live in Europe somewhere and still enjoy either a lifestyle investment or a ROI investment, which are two different things. So, and I love that that point. So now I want to stop here because when you talk about an, an, an ROI investment versus a lifestyle investment, help us understand what you mean by that. Yeah. So a lifestyle investment is more something where there's some people that want to go to the same place every year and they want to have their little foothold in, let's say, Belize, you know. And so they, they have their apartment or condo or house or whatever, and they come back every year, you know, for a month, two months, three months, six months, whatever it is. And when they enjoy that, they take it out of the rental pool or their rental market. So it dilutes the ROI. So that's more of a lifestyle investment. Whereas if you don't rent it or if you, if you rent it and you don't, um, go and visit, it brings the ROI back up. So you can have more of an ROI versus a lifestyle. So you get to enjoy it, you know, like a beach house or a house on the water somewhere. And you get to stay there two, three, four, six months. So I guess, it would be, and I love that. So it's really, I, I just, in my mind, I got this picture of, of Norm and Cheers, right? When you walk in, everybody knows who you are. So that there's the part of 
when you invest in a place for lifestyle, when you're walking down the street and you're in that same place at the same time every year, you know everybody, they all know you, the smiles are there, they're wide smiles and big hugs and stuff like that. On the other side, when you're talking about ROI, it's really about the, the, the currency, the, the money, and the amount of money that's coming back so that you have the ability to say, hey, listen, I'm investing in a place like Belize, which has given me a great return. And, and yeah, you don't really care so much about being able to walk down the street. So I, I, I appreciate you helping us understand, bring those to the forefront, ROI investing versus, uh, versus lifestyle investing. Um, so, so one of the other things that I know that you're really passionate about, and we've, you've started talking about this before already, is just the, the sense of being able to educate. And whenever someone is, this is one of the key pillars of, of this podcast, right, is really helping to educate everyone when you want to invest beyond your backyard. So w- when you start thinking about where that came from for you in terms of that dedication, that desire to educate uh, clients, in just people that you're meeting, I guess what, what, what's the, the genesis of that desire to, to help educate people? I'm, I'm a big, I care for people. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging because I, I don't mean to do that, but I just care for people. I care for, you know, animals. I care for a lot of things, you know, and I met um, the real estate guys, you know, probably, I don't know, six, seven years ago and listened to them, but never took action. Right. Mm -hmm. And I saw how there are people on their podcast were always helping and and giving free content. And, and then I started going to their um, classes and, and been around them and, and just that being around them has wanted me to also do the same. Because Belize is a very easy market to get in, but it's a hard market to get out because things, we don't have an MLS. We don't have millions and millions of people here. The country has like 400,000 people, you know, in the whole country. Um, And once you're here on vacation, you just get enamored by the blue water The you know, you just fall in love right away. And so... I see people getting taken advantage of. And so I wanted to help people before they get here. And then when they get here, after they leave, you know, I I don't think it's a place you should buy on the first trip. Uh, Some people do. Um, It took me, what, four or five years before I bought anything here my first trip, you know. Um, So I just, I have that desire to help people. And And talking to a lot of people, you know, I I don't know if, you know, if if I'm allowed to say this or, or, you know, when people are watching this, you know, this COVID-19, you know, I'm talking to, I have a a friend in Switzerland. Um, He's lost quarter of a million, half a million dollars in the stock market. My prices here in Belize have not dropped, you know, so it's, you know, and then I have people at friends in the States that have lost a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know, as well. So it's, it's, it's just wanting to give people options, you know, that you can invest outside of main or outside of wall street into main street, so to speak. So, and, and, you know, this is a, this is so in, in knowing you and seeing that you've taken time, I mean, we've seen uh, one another uh, in, in different places in the, in the U S and, and, and I know that that's something that you are very passionate about is spending time developing relationships um, helping to educate, share very much an abundance mindset. And so that is one of the things that, that really comes, comes through uh, when anyone meets you, and I know those of you that are watching on the the, the video here, you you see the big smile, and and uh, it's so genuine, and and the relationship part uh, also too is is very important. Um, and and we both have friends right now that are in the that are in the market. I think those of us that are also in in real estate, things are happening. They just don't happen as quickly, so we have more time to react, readjust, uh, and and adjust things like that. So. Um, definitely can understand. I have a couple of friends in, in Switzerland as well and, and many here in uh, Italy, Spain and France. So um, I, I've 
heard many of the stories here recently as well. Um, well one of the things you talked about too, or we mentioned, is this: you, you have um, you you are the a board member uh, locally at the at the Humane Society, and mm-hmm. so I know that you being a business owner and entrepreneur allows you to uh, create new relationships. Maybe if you could talk to us about a little bit of that passion project that you have um, in, in terms of your involvement with the uh, Humane Society as well. Yeah, I, I've always loved animals. Um, I'm kind of an introvert, so I'd rather be with animals than people, so to speak. So it's, it's very hard for me. It's mentally draining to be around a lot of people, um, whereas animals, it's just kind of easy. And there was a huge need in, in Placencia. Um, I was at the bank and they called me and says, hey, you're on the board of directors for the Humane Society. <laughs> Is that OK? And I'm like, sure. And uh, and then two years later um, or a year and a half later, um, they asked me to be uh, or I was uh, nominated to be the chairman. I was the chairman for four or five years, I think. And then uh, my. I don't want to say my focus changed because I'm still wanting to focus, but I was spending so much time, it was hurting my business and hurting my personal growth and wanting to learn and having to travel more for, you know, the real estate guys events because I'm wanting to syndicate and, and be a investor where I bring in other people's money. And that's a serious, serious responsibility. So I've taken a few years off as chairman. Um, I'm, I'm a board member still. Um, I'm also uh, the fire department is part of my identity. Uh, so I'm on the fire board in Placencia as well. Um, you know, but a lot of that is kind of, I'm active, but I'm hurting a little bit as far as being active because I'm spending so much time, personal growth, and developing. And then once I get to a point where I'm able financially and um, mentally, then I'll go back full board, you know, and then I can even do more because I have more resources, if, if that makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. And I think that's one of the things to, to just recognize because there's so, we're so many people that are busy professionals. You know, you are, you're working your day job at the same time you are building your own business or you want to build out your investment portfolio and being able to have that abundant mindset, being able to, to dedicate time and energy at, can, as you mentioned before, also help to build new relationships with people that have similar passions that as you do. So I just wanted to be able to highlight that because I think it's it's really important and also goes back to demonstrate more that life is not just about investing for return of capital. It's also return in terms of building new relationships, being able to give back, help others uh, and things like that. So uh, I thought that 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 uh, that was really Im- important, and so I guess um, a couple of things that I am, I guess before we 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 wrap up, I always like to ask uh, everyone three questions. Uh, these are three questions, and I know that you have be able to just crush it, knock it out of the park. I guess we'll call it our uh, we'll start to call it our our going long final three, um, and really the first question is, and because we love being here in Europe and connecting uh, the rest of the world, uh, what, what is your, your favorite European city, either that you visited or that you have on your, uh, on your wish list? Um, Ooh, that's kind of hard. Um, only can pick one. <laughs> I can pick one. I'd have to say, and I've been to, I've been to Germany. I was born in Germany, but I've always wanted to go to Israel. That's where my grandparents are from. So I want to go to Jerusalem. So I think Jerusalem would be my bucket list to go to. Awesome. Okay. Jerusalem it is. Second question. And this really is about understanding from your uh, mistakes, mistakes that have been made as an, as a real estate investor or business owner, Uh, I guess, what was the biggest mistake that you had, but more importantly, what have you learned as a result of, of that mistake that comes to mind? Ooh, let me see. I'll be real uh, authentic with you. Um, sacrifice. Um, I sacrificed my relationship with my wife, my daughter. Um, 
by working all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so my marriage didn't work once I moved to Belize. Um, you know, so after 20 something years, we split ways. Um, my daughter, when she turned 18, she went back to the States. Her and I still have a great relationship and I'm still friends with my, my wife, my ex-wife, whatever um, you want to call it. But I'd say that would be my biggest mistake would be sacrificing my family. It, and, and so I appreciate the, the, the transparency, the in sharing and having met your daughter as well. I think it's great to also see that, 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 that relationship is so strong. And also she is understanding and more following in, uh, in your footsteps. So, uh, so that's awesome. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the transparency there. And, no uh, and David, you know, what? last question has to do with books. And I know that we say 88% of the, uh, wealthiest people in the world spend uh, their time reading, read at least uh, one one book a month minimum. And um, so it really is about uh, what book has made the biggest impact on you, either in the, as a person or, or as, a, as an investor. And I guess, what was the lesson that you learned? Um, man, one? Just one. I, I, I hate reading, so I'm bad. Um, I'd say the biggest one that I enjoyed the best was Cashflow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. That one hit me the most, you know, defining the different quadrants. Um, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad probably had the biggest impact on me, but Cashflow Quadrant really knocked it out of the park for me. If, well, you were watching this or reading this, you definitely are watching or listening definitely should check out that is a uh, that's a game changer so um yeah glad to, uh, thank you for sharing that with us as well appreciate that um listen david we've learned so much uh about you uh you've also helped us understand that you know there are opportunities beyond your backyard you have to be willing to allow what you feel in your heart and in your gut to help you to move towards action Take action, be diligent about that action, have criteria against those actions, be able to work work with and align yourself with mentors, allies, so that you can learn as much as possible and then be definite in terms of the actions that you are, are taking. So um, I know I've enjoyed this conversation. I'm sure many other people that are listening and watching have also enjoyed the conversation and they're dying to understand how can they get in touch with you, David? And so I'd love for you to tell us before, uh, before we wrap things up, what is the best way for anyone who wants to reach out to, to contact you? What's the best way for them to do that? I guess email would be good. Um, David at Caribbean capital group.com. Um, and then if you want, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to, but, uh, you know, they could have a, a chapter in my book, um, you know, that we that I wrote, which is my story from Belize. I'd be more than happy to give that to uh, your listeners. And I also wrote a, um, a special report on how to invest um, in Belize using leverage, um, because typical leverage isn't here yet. You know, typical bank loans and things like that. So you have to think outside the box. So. Uh, again, if they email me, David at CaribbeanCapitalGroup.com, I'd be more than happy to send them uh, those two things. Okay, perfect. So we can contact you, David at CaribbeanCapital.com. They can also write you there in order to get the chapter from your book, uh, yep, as well as... That. Okay. Yep. Perfect. And everyone, we're going to make sure we will include them in the video as well as the, uh, the audio notes. So you'll get a chance to uh, contact, reach out to David. Um, David, listen, man, this is, uh, it's been a pleasure. It's definitely been a pleasure and uh, I'm looking forward to having you on again, uh, in the future, we can dive more into what's happening in Belize specifically. Uh, but thank you so much uh, for joining us here on the going long podcast. Uh, everyone, this is Billy Keels. We're looking forward to uh, having you join us on the next episode. So have a great day, everybody. Freedom. Wow. Don't you love hearing from top notch experts in the field? You know, when I was getting started, I really wish that I would have had access to such experts. And even more, I wish they would have given me like a really simple list of things to follow so that I could have gotten to my goals much faster and been much happier even sooner. So that's why I've created for you the seven things that you should avoid 
in order to be successful in long distance investing. And you can pick that up really easily by going to billykeels.com forward slash seven things to avoid. And also, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to leave a five-star review. I'm looking forward to seeing you on our very next episode. So go out and make it a great day.